Thanks to the huge growth of AI, you can now automate parts of your life and business that used to eat hours of your time every single day. Because right now you can build your own AI agent that follows your instructions, makes decisions on its own, and handles tasks exactly the way you want them to. The crazy thing is, most beginners think getting started with N8N and building AI agents is way too complicated. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Once you get a few key parts of the agent set up, the whole process ends up being way easier than most people expect. That's why in this tutorial, I'll take you through the whole setup step by step. You'll learn how to build an agent from scratch and how to self-host N810 for better speed, reliability, and no cloud limits. Before we get into the actual AI agent setup, there's one thing we need to sort out first, how you're going to run NA10. You've got two options here. Option one is to use the NA10 cloud, and the cloud version is completely fine if you're creating something simple, running a few basic workflows, or just trying out the basics. But as soon as you start building more advanced setups, like the AI agents we're building today, it gets harder. Those agents have to run several steps, make smarter decisions, send a lot more requests and execute way more frequently. That's where you're gonna hit limits pretty fast. You'll get caps and limits and the price rises as your usage does. That's why I recommend option two, self-hosting an A10. And for AI agents, it's almost always the better option. When you self-host, there are no execution limits, it's faster and more stable, and you control all the data your agents use. In the long run, it ends up being a lot cheaper. And don't worry, you don't need to set up your own physical server or know anything about DevOps. We're using a VPS and the tool I'm about to show you gives you a one-click NA10 install, so it's really beginner friendly. So let me show you how this setup works. The tool we're going to be using for self-hosting NA10 is Hostinger. And the reason I use Hostinger is because it is the best VPS platform for NA10. It's really been optimized for self-hosting NA10. The link in the description takes you straight to the NA10 setup page. Here you'll see the different VPS plans. And if you struggle picking which one fits your needs, you can literally ask ChatGPT. Just explain what you need to run and it'll pick the right plan for you. For this video, I'm going with the KVM2 plan because it has plenty of power for beginners and even medium sized agents. So just pick the plan you want, choose your billing period. And when you're on the checkout page, make sure you paste in my coupon code, Yuri, to get an additional 10% off all yearly plans. Then choose the server location closest to you and under application, pick NA10. If you click my link, it should be selected automatically. You can pick the normal template or the one that comes with 100 ready-made workflows, both will work perfectly. Once you finish the purchase, Hostinger will automatically start setting up your VPS. It usually takes a minute or two. And once it's ready, click Manage App and you'll see your new NA10 instance ready to go. You now have a fully self-hosted NA10 instance running with no execution limits and full control over speed, stability, and how your agents operate. So with that set up, Let's jump into a new workflow and start building our AI agent. When you open your workflow, you'll see this screen. Click the plus button to choose your trigger. A trigger is basically the thing that starts your automation. And since I want to build an AI agent that sends me an update on the stock market and a weekly quote, I wanted to start on a schedule. I'm going to add this trigger in for the intervals I want it on weeks because I want it to happen weekly. You can pick whatever interval fits you but weekly feels natural for something like market updates, since it gives you a nice snapshot without spamming your inbox. Then weeks between triggers are going to be one. For the weekdays, I want it on Sunday, just like you see here. And for the hour, I want it to happen at noon. Now we have our trigger, so I'm gonna go back to the canvas, and the trigger is sitting right here. And now we want to actually add our agent. This is the brain of the whole setup. So I'm going to click on this plus button over here, select AI and select AI agent. Inside here, we can now choose the model, the memory, and the tool that the agent is going to use. I'll start by selecting the chat model. It has a bunch of the most popular chat models, but for this example, I'm just going to pick OpenAI. When I click it, it opens this window and we need to create a credential. The way OpenAI models work here is not the same as your normal chatbot. It doesn't use a monthly subscription. This is actually nice because you only pay for what you use instead of paying a fixed price whether you use it a lot or not at all. Instead, it uses API tokens, which means that every time it generates a response, it will cost a small amount of tokens. So to add your API key, you want to go to platform.openai.com, sign up or log in, then fill out the basic information it asked for, give the API key a name, and then you'll get your API secret key. You'll want to copy this and not show it to anyone else, and make sure you save it somewhere safe, because OpenAI won't let you view it again. Once you have your API key, you can paste it into your OpenAI credential, and you want to make sure you load your account with some money so the model actually has funds to run on. Once that's set up, 
you can return back. And now we have our model available. And when it shows up, that basically confirms the connection worked and your agent can actually think instead of just throwing errors. So now we have a usable model connected. And the next thing we want to do is add the memory for our AI agent. This makes sure the agent actually remembers previous interactions. Otherwise, every single time it runs, it would feel like talking to someone with zero memory, which gets annoying really fast when you're trying to build something consistent. I'm selecting memory, choosing simple memory, and now the agent can remember what happened earlier in the chat. Now, finally, we need to add the tool our agent is going to use. This is where you basically give your agent its abilities. Without tools, it can think, but it can't actually go out and fetch or do anything in the real world. There are a bunch of tools here for all sorts of stuff, but since we need Google searches for the trading news and weekly quotes, I'm just typing SERP API, the Google search tool. And for the credential, I'm going to grab the API key from SERP again, so I'll sign up, get the key, and paste it in. Now our agent has the ability to search through Google. To quickly give it a test, I'm going to add a new trigger, which is going to be the chat message received trigger. I'm going to connect it to our agent and say something like, give me recent stock news updates and a quote from a historical figure. Then I click send and in the result, we get back exactly what we asked for. This first test is important because it confirms nothing's broken before we start adding more steps. Now that we know our agent is working, I'm going to remove the previous trigger and give our agent the actual instructions. Basically, the data it needs so it knows what it's supposed to do on its own. Think of this like giving it a job description. Without it, the agent has no idea what it's supposed to do. I'll select the source for the prompt, choose define below, and then for the user message, I'm going to write the real prompt. I'll write, you are a weekly brief agent, you take a quote of the week and the current S&P 500 overview and format them into a short, reliable weekly briefing. You will find one quote of the week, a simple summary of how the S&P 500 moved and one sentence takeaway for the reader. Use the current date here. To make sure the date lines up with the real date when this goes out, I'm opening the schema input on the left and you can see all the items we can drag in. So I'm going to pick the readable date right here and just drag it into the prompt. It's great because it fills in the exact date for you so you don't have to update it every week. And then finally at the bottom, I'll write, format it like a mini email newsletter in Markdown so that we actually get the output format we want. Before we test the agent, we need to update the simple memory session. This makes sure the inputs stay consistent so your agent doesn't mix your test data with the real scheduled data. So I'll go back to the canvas and run our agent. You'll see the info come back. But what you'll also notice is that it's formatted in a very poor way. This is normal, raw AI Markdown always looks messy before you clean it up. To fix that, we want to add a data transformation node. This step translates the markdown text into HTML, which is the language emails actually understand. I'm going to click the plus button, go to data transformation, choose markdown to HTML, and then drag our agent's output into it. After that, I click execute step. Now, finally, we're adding a normal model node so the email looks nice and actually stalled. I'll generate a new node, go to AI, select open AI, and then under messaging model, I'll select my model from the list. Then I'll set the role to system because that sets the behavior or context for the next message. And then I'll give it a prompt that says, make the HTML below look better using inline CSS styling for an email. Make it look like a pretty newsletter. I'll put only the results without any headers or other elements. Then I'll add a user message and insert the data we got from our markdown step. Then I'll execute the step and go back to the canvas. And now we need to make sure we actually get something sent to our email. So I'll add another node, search for Gmail, and find the send a message node. Now we need to connect our Gmail account. The first thing we need to do is create a Google Cloud project. So head over there, click go to create project, give it a name, and then click create. Try to give it a name you'll actually recognize later because people often end up with a ton of projects and forget which one belongs to which automation. Next, enable the APIs we need. If you skip this step, Gmail won't connect because nothing has permission yet. To do that, hover on the left over API and services and click enable APIs and services. The only one we need for this setup is Gmail. So I'll search for Gmail and enable it. The next thing we need to do is create the authentication consent screen. To do that, go to the API and services page and click authentication consent. Then click get started, give the app a name, select your account and click next. Select external if you're using a regular Gmail account or internal if you are using a business one. Set up the support email, agree to the services and click continue. Now we've created the authentication consent screen. This is the screen Google shows when something wants access to your account. So you need it set up before anything can connect. Next, we need to create the authentication client. This will give us the client ID and client secret we need for the credentials in our automation tool. So click create authentication client, set the application type to web application, give it a name, and then we need to add a redirect URI. This is available in the credential setup. So go back to your automation tool, 
create a new credential, copy to redirect URL, go back to the console, paste it in and click create. You'll now get your client ID. So copy that and paste it inside your credentials. Then go back, click into the client, copy the client secret and paste that in as well. You'll now get the sign in with Google button. Before we click it though, we wanna go back to the Google console, then go over to audience, click publish app and publish it. If you publish it, you won't have to log in again every seven days. Now go back to your credentials, click sign in with Google, sign in with the test user account, go through the warnings, select all the scopes and you'll be connected. So now we can select the email we wanna to send to and then create the subject line. For me, it's gonna be something like stock updates for, and then I'll drag today's date into the subject. And for the message, I'll add the output we created earlier. Then I'll go back to the console and click on execute workflow. You'll see the whole process running. And if we now check our inbox, we get a nicely organized, beautifully formatted email. It has all the S&P 500 data, as well as a quote to get us motivated for the week. The last thing you need to do is head back to your NA10 console. Up in the top right, click save, and then on the left, make sure the toggle is set to active. This makes the agent run automatically in the background without us doing anything. Now you've seen how you can build an AI agent inside an A10, set up the logic, test it, and have it run on its own. And even after building this, you can change nodes, add tools and customize it. So the agent does exactly what you want. And this is the fun part. Once you get the setup, you can outsource all your repetitive tasks, stuff like checking data each morning, pulling updates, sending summaries, formatting emails, all the small tasks that add up. And the great thing is all of this is possible because we're running everything on our own server. When you self-host an 8N, you get unlimited workflows, unlimited concurrent executions, way more speed and complete control over both your data and how your agents operate. Plus, since it's self-hosted, you're not dealing with execution caps or random slowdowns. Your agents can run as often as you need them to and they stay fully private and fully yours. If you wanna build automations like this, or run your AI agents the right way, sign up to Hostinger with the link in the description. And you can use the code Yuri to get an extra discount on yearly plans. I'll see you guys in the next video.